Good day everyone, my name is Veneka and welcome to the third episode of my Trailblazer League. Before we get into the actual content, I want to tell you guys that I'm having so much fun playing this mode and I just want to tell you guys, like make you aware of the fact that it is only here for two more months and if you have not tried it yourself then I would really recommend you to do that because it's a one-time chance and it's not about like getting rank one or whatever but it's like having fun with this mode. I mean, this is RuneScape in a whole different way. And like I said, you have one chance, so I would say take it. But anyway, I've been looking for a gear upgrade in the Trailblazer League and I think that Void is gonna be my best way to go. I have Asgarnia unlocked and I was like, I'm just gonna go with full Void because I have the range relic and I think this is just a great combination to have. And I was like, if I have full Void, then I have like good armor for a very, very long time. I can train my Slayer with that, I can camp good monsters for money and stuff like that. So that was my idea. Now I noticed that a lot of people ask me the question like is Void easy to get on the Trailblazer League? Um, yes it is because a lot of people are playing and the games are incredibly fast because all these people have these overpowered relics so you kill the portals in a matter of seconds so the games were very quick I think I did full Void in about 7 or 8 hours on the mid boat so if you have the veteran boat it could be much quicker but um, yeah it is worth it. So like most of you already know by now is that I was so stupid to not pick the last recall relic but I did realize that of course my jewelry perk that I did pick has some um, advantages and that is why I bought myself a slayer ring because this will never run out of charges and I can use that to train my slayer here at the Kuresk and make money at the same time so that's actually a very nice combination not too bad. So I think the most important thing that we all have to remember here is that we play this game mode because it's fun, like I just said at the beginning of the video, and even though, for example, I picked the wrong relic, or what is wrong, you know, of course it is not the meta, like, people care about meta this day, and um, of course, if I had the chance to do uh, it again, to pick a new relic again, I would have chosen the last recall one, but I'm just gonna stick with my jewelry now. Some people have even said, like, why don't you start over now that you don't have it, like, I'm not gonna go that far, you know, I am happy with what I've got and it's just a fun mode to play, so I'll just keep going and see what I can do with my relic. Now in the background you can see me train some Slayer and you've probably noticed that I'm getting so many superior creatures and of course that is because of the relic that I've chosen on tier 4, which is the Unnatural Selection and this is so incredibly good. Um, every time you kill a Slayer monster that has superiors, um, there is a 1 in 25 chance to spawn one and it gives like 33,000 experience in Slayer for one single superior kill. So I really trained my Slayer like it was nothing, like it was training cooking or whatever. I think I talked about this before in the previous episode, but what I want to do in this league is try to get myself at least one God Wars pet because that is like one of the only few things that actually are league to league rewards so if there's gonna be a next league somewhere next year maybe then at least I have something that I can take with that like I hope for Commander Zilliana I'm gonna kill that one a lot uh, because I want to get the uh, Armadale Crossbow of course and um, once I have the Armadale Crossbow I will then also kill other God Wars bosses to get for example the Armadale gear and just do so much more than that but before I'm actually capable of camping these bosses, I really want to unlock my last area first and the last two relics because I will just get so much more XP then and better drop rates and it's just better in general. Now before I started making videos about this league, I was certain that I wanted to unlock Asgarnia, Kenderin and Fremenic. But now that we are actually making so much progress, I'm thinking about not picking Kendrin anymore because I may want to go for Tyrion win so I can kill Zora and just camp for supplies to train my stats and get a blowpipe, so I haven't fully decided yet. Alright my friends, so I want you to get your nerdgasms ready because after this kill, I was incredibly happy with the drop. I got myself an imbued heart, which is the very best drop you can possibly receive from a superior creature. Now I have to admit that the imbued heart is not that useful in the league because I'm not really focusing on magic too much and what it does is you can operate it to get a boost in magic levels for a certain amount of time but what I of course can do with it is um, use it to boost my le magic level to a certain level that I can complete a high level task so that is always welcome of course. 
So during my time killing the Kuresk here, I've been thinking like, what is the next relic that I want to unlock for tier 5? Now you have the Botanic one, the Botanic relic for Herblore and for farming. You have the one that gives you the Infernal tools or Crystal tools, I don't even know, to um, basically cook your food when you fish it or to burn your logs, stuff like that. And you have Equilibrium, if that's the way to pronounce it, to get more experience for everything you do. So if I take a look at the goals for me in this league, like personally, then it's not to max out my account. So yeah, getting more XP is always good, but I don't know if that's like the way to go for me. So I think the best thing to do is to go for the Botanic Relic to get potions very easily, train farming and Herblore, because potions are used very frequently in bossing, so why not? Now another short term goal that I have is to get 85 Slayer and kill Abyssal Demons for a whip. And even though I am not focusing on melee that much because I picked the range perk, it's a very good thing to do because killing an Abyssal Demon gives 250 points and getting yourself a whip and equipping it gives another 250, so um, yeah, the more points the better. And now that we are talking about Abyssal Demons, I could also talk about the Abyssal Sire, of course, because that is the boss variant of the Abyssal Demon, and that is actually quite important because there are some tasks um, related to it. The problem is just that I've never killed the boss before and I don't really know how to do it, so I'll have to look up a guide, but I do remember somewhere that you need shadow spells with ancients to kill him, but I'm not 100% sure if you actually needed to kill him, so if you know the answer to that, feel free to help me out with that. But anyway, I thought it was time to leave the Koresks because I've been there for a very long time. I made a lot of money as well. And of course we got 85 Slayers, so that means we can kill Abyssal Demons. So I went back to Cheldar to get myself a new task. And this time, of course, Abyssal Demons. And hopefully I would be able to uh, get myself the Abyssal Whip. The only annoying part about this is that I cannot kill them in uh, Mauritania or whatever. So I have to go to this area uh, to kill them. But what I really did enjoy here was the superior creature because it gives so much XP. It is very easy to kill, just use protect from melee. And as you can see here in the clip, I got 50,000 experience from one single kill. Now I have been camping these abyssal creatures for about two tasks, but I wasn't able to get myself the abyssal whip. I mean, you can't always be lucky, of course. Uh, even though I did have the modifier for the drop rates, I had 50% better chance of receiving a whip. I didn't get one. Um, so what I decided to do was just to end the task and after that leave the place to complete as many tasks as possible um, so I could get my fifth relic and then have an even better chance of getting the Abyssal Whip. So I decided to complete a very quick spider task to get 300 Slayer points and then I was able to unlock the Brother Fletching perk and that completes a task actually so that was very nice to have and uh, also very good to train my Fletching of course. I honestly think that with this method I can get 99 Fletching in a matter of hours because you can just use the feathers on the bolts and if I have enough money I can buy these like infinitely and this is gonna be millions of XP per hour so that's really really sick. But for now I just decided to go for 57 because with my Skilling Prodigy perk which gives a plus 12 boost I was able to make a rune crossbow and that is a huge upgrade so I was incredibly happy to have this finally now. I can use this bow and a shield at the same time. So after that I did a random task of making 30 prayer potions which is of course always useful and I also realized I was on the lunar spellbook. So I decided to use my imbued heart to boost my magic so I could use the spin flex spell and this is very useful because it trains crafting and magic and these are both needed for future tasks. Crafting is super useful because then I can make a glory and I will have infinite teleports which is super useful. And magic I trained for a very specific reason as well because if I boosted it to a high enough level I was able to use the fertile soil spell if that's the way to pronounce it. And then I can just basically use super compost on my farming patches but it also gives me 100 league points which is super good. I also tried to complete a medium glue scroll, but that's gonna be harder than I thought because even if you have access to a certain area, you also need certain items sometimes that come from other areas. So now that I was completing all these tasks anyway, I was like, I wanna do something big again. So I decided to train my construction to level 63 because with my skilling prodigy perk, which gives plus 12, I'm level 75 and that is enough to make a gilded altar. Now I have unlocked the Fremenic area and in this area you can buy the materials needed to build this altar and since I've been killing so many Koresk, I have a lot of big bones in the bank. So I was like, why not make that altar and then train my prayer on the 
help her as well. Now training prayer has many advantages because of course the higher the level the better. I mean I will have more points when I'm doing bossing and a prayer potion will give me back more points as well. But there's also a few tasks that are related to training prayer so it is always nice to just have the level now and make sure that I can get all these points as well. Now when using the altar I decided to just use the gilded altar itself and not lit the burners because I didn't have any marantil herbs and the few that I did have I wanted to keep for dragon bones or maybe even superior dragon bones later. So after training my prayer I decided to do something challenging. I went to the Brimhaven Agility Parkour and there is an elite task that gives 250 points if you get 60 tickets in a row without failing once. And I actually managed to do it, it wasn't that hard. I, I think the secret is to just, every time you get a ticket, you just go to the middle again and just wait for the next one. That's it, so pretty easy. So after completing this task, I finally had enough points to unlock the next relic, tier 5, and like I talked about before, I was gonna go with the Botanist. Now this relic is actually amazing, because farming will be 5 times faster, I will get double the harvest from it as well, I will basically never lose my second ingredients, but the best part of all is that every single boost that I get will never drain back to normal. So if I drink a sip from a ranging potion, I will always stay at the maximum range level and that is just great for bossing. And of course also the drop rates have been increased even more, so that is always nice to have of course. Now with all the tickets that I got from the agility minigame, I actually got a huge boost in my agility level to level 65 and of course plus 12 with my relic. So. That is looking very good. I only need five more levels and then I can access Commander Zilliana's God Wars Dungeon Room. So now that I have this new relic, my trees will grow five times as fast, just like every other thing that I grow with farming, so that is always very beneficial to have. And of course, making potions is much better, because as you can see here, I'm making my prayer potions and you can see that I'm not losing my snake grass. But at the same time, I am making four dose potions instead of three. Now, even though I wasn't planning on going to Commander Zilliana yet, I just wanted to go and get level 70 agility because it gives me free points and it also completes an elite task in the Fremenic area and I really want to complete that because later, if I am actually going to complete that, I will get noted Dagonoth bones and that is going to be my way to 99 prayer. And now we have come to the part of the video where I introduce you to one of my addictions in RuneScape and that is killing wyverns. This is because in the main game I love this so much. It's very AFK and it's good for money, good for drops, especially on an Iron Man. And I gotta say that the main goal was to just kill them a few times for the task of killing one wyvern and then maybe get dragon legs for a task or granite plate legs. But I enjoyed it so much that I decided to stay. And honestly, that was the best decision I ever made because Wyverns are already good in the main game, but in the leagues, it's out of this world because with my range relic, I was 200% accurate and I hit two times as fast, which means I got like over 100 Wyvern kills per hour. And I was doing that like on an AFK spot, which is so easy. I was getting Dragon Plate Skirts, Dragon Plate Legs, Granite Legs, uh, loads of prayer experience, pure essence to train runecrafting and you look at my inventory you can see all my iron ore, magic locks, battle staffs, uh, adamant bars, like all these drops are so amazing and it was incredibly easy to get them. So I was like from now on my goal is going to be very simple, I'm going to stay here until 99 range and collect as many supplies as possible because I get so many Renar seeds, snapdragon seeds, so I have infinite potions then and also with all the other things I can train so many skills. It's not just the resources but it's also the arrows and bolts. You get so many rune arrows, adamant bolts, rune bolts. I can enchant these with the diamonds and rubies so it, it, it all makes sense you know. With this method I can just prepare myself for all the bossing that I need to in the future of this league. So. That's why I was so happy about it and why I'm so excited when I talk about it right now. And of course the best part of it is that every single kill I do there is a chance of getting a Draconic Visage and normally it's only a 1 in 10k drop but of course in this league 1 in 3.3k thanks to my relics. And as you may have seen is that every time I use range I put it on long range because I just want to train defense as well which is useful in Cold Wars. I want to be a range tank and if I'm 99 range anyway I can't train it anymore so why not just train defense at the same time. I mean, I guess I could go for 25 mil XP for more points, but oh well. You know, here we go, 99 range, we finally achieved it. It's of course not that difficult in this league, but still, it's a nice achievement because that means I've now basically reached my max level and uh, I will not be able to increase my max hit anymore unless I get better gear. So I guess that in this situation, normal people would leave this place because they got 99 range and they're like, okay, I got some supplies, I got some stats, it's okay, we're gonna go and move on. But I was like, you know what, I'm loving this place anyway, let's just stay for a while. And 
That was such a great decision because, yup, I didn't believe it, but here we go. A draconic visage on kill number 850, I believe. It is so sick. I've never had this drop before from a wyvern. Like, very long time ago, I got it from the King Black Dragon when I was like 12 years old, but that is so long ago. And I actually got myself the visage, so... I have no words for it, guys. I have no words for it. But anyways, that's it gonna be for today. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.